Wednesday, December the 4th, 2019. And I'm back down in one of my favourite areas, the High Weald, about to undertake around eight and a half miles of walking between here and Royal Tunbridge Wells. It's a cracking day, nice and chill, about four, four to five degrees C. Lovely sunny day as well. And uh, today is the Saturday Walkers Club annual Christmas bash up near London Bridge where I was um, held up on my last walk in Petswood due to that unfortunate incident but uh, hopefully today will be a bit more jovial and um, get to see the faces behind the website I only see them once a year so let's get cracking it's 20 past 12 already and uh, clearly I've only got four hours left so I um, need to get my skates on this is free walk 196 or SWC walk 196 there is Wadhurst station which has a very busy car park now I notice and uh, understandably so prime commuter belt this lovely area so opposite the keys we turn right here to cross back over the railway line I believe down this uh, footpath which as you can see is now the Sussex border path and I might have done this uh, before I haven't been down this way for a few years, well in fact 18 months when I went via Buell Water but prior to that it was uh, about 6-7 years ago OK there you go, you've got a car park up the bank on my left and down below rubbish, absolutely unbelievable not a good start to the walk this People are just reversing their cars up there and dumping it all down here. I see tyres ahead as well. Here you go. So I'll report this on Pathwatch app. Looking back at Wadhurst Station. As I cross the tracks. Still frost on the ground. In the sheltered spots. So straight away, we're into classic Wilden territory. Having come out onto the lane, past that uh, house there, don't take that left there. Our onward journey is ahead along the lane. This hard surface through this woodland here is going to be a bit of a luxury today because uh, from the notes I've read, uh, there's a fair few boggy stretches and even a stream to cross, a stream or two even. So, uh, well that's typical of the weald. Mud, water, particularly at this time of year. That's why it was previously associated with the iron industry. Talking of which, there is a pond. first wooden bridge of the day lovely gurgling this second footbridge is easy missed so be advised cracking scenery from the top of the hill with the mount the building known as the Mount over there, which I believe is now a special needs institution. <laughs> Google that, the Mount Waddhurst, if you're so inclined. I wonder if that pheasant is being purposely hung there for Christmas. Certainly headless anyway.
come off the lane at this juncture, take a right here on this car wide drive. Yeah, certainly plenty of mud and water about. I think the path's been slightly uh, diverted here, but we do do a right along this belt of trees as per the instructions. Wonderful Wilden views. What a glorious day, eh? Can't go any further left because the sun's right in my face, unfortunately. Well, or fortunately, gee, fortunately, whichever way you look at it. That gate could do with uh, some attention, replacing actually. Anyway, decent views on the right this time. Still some leaves on the oak trees, as I was reading yesterday in the Nature blog on the uh, Saturday Walkers Club site. What's good about the Weald is that uh, it's very pastoral and rural, small pocket of uh, former times in the southeast of England. Um, and if you're lucky, not too much in the way of human encroachment. Little homesteads here and there, hamlets, wonderful. There are steps here amongst the beech leaves, believe it or not. Bit of an eyesore there on the right. Over another footbridge and stream. Now going down Partridge's Lane for 175 metres. Come off the lane here, take that footpath on the left. As the lane ascends, swings to the right. Up a thoughtfully placed staircase. Interesting memorial to Anne Bain there, who lived uh, a decent age. Well, not that decent actually. 63. Anyway, Anne, God rest your soul. So we continue up the right hand side of this field. Come out opposite an oast conversion. Passing through this uh, very pleasant farmstead. Eli Farm on the map. And what a wonderful view. A lovely house over there. I wonder if that's mentioned in the notes. Cal seems to think so. text does refer to a helpful handrail and there it is. Don't know if you can see that but it's a wonderful image of the sun creating some steam over there as it defrosts the cold ground. Interesting. I don't believe that to be a dandelion but it's in the uh, same family. Yeah, nice sunny spot as well. Take a left here apparently at this junction on the driveway to a property called Lightlands, which must be uh, through that gate there. What chance have you got against a tie and a crest? Eli farm over there and I wonder if this is Knapp Wood. Certainly a large woodland. I can hear what sounds like a raven somewhere. Lovely view eh? 
as I say, I think that's Nap Wood down there. I can just about hear the A267 in the distance. Got to get across that, unfortunately. The uh, current tranquil hiatus will soon be overturned. So, as mentioned in the text, there's the very top of Saxonbury Hill Tower. Just peeping out above Knapp Wood. So I was right about that wood. Onward journeys alongside this hedge. Talking of hedges, look at this wonderful hedge. Nice and thick, full of holly and protective species. Wonderful, nice and thick at the base. And the other beauty about the weald is that the field sizes are small, plenty of service trees. So wildlife uh, absolutely abounds down here. So this is the sort of model that you need to be uh, reintroducing elsewhere. As I say, machinery these days can cope with smaller field sizes, I would have thought. The technology's there to take off the uh, blades for the combines, for example. The tractors are too big anyway, because they compact the soil. So they need to be made lighter and possibly smaller. Lots of things that need uh, attention in the agricultural world, I would have thought, following Brexit. Now following the wheeled and walks, alongside the A267 in this undergrowth. So much leaf litter on the floor, the path's almost indistinguishable. But uh, you can just about make it out with Irridge Park on my left, which is uh, hopefully where we're passing through. A permissive path ahead. <laughs> Herd of deer over there in the park. And even from this distance, they've got wind of me. That stag has anyway. They look like uh, roe deer. Yeah, look at him sniffing the air. Amazing. As I say, they're a good uh, 500 metres, 750 metres from me. So having uh, just come out of the woodland for 200 metres or so, there's the way mark on the tree, uh, tree trunk referred to in the text to continue our onward journey. And another marked Defra Conservation Walks. So we must be entering the permissive route shortly. Moving away from the A267 now anyway. Here's the small stream referred to in the text that has to be, uh, excuse the pun, navigated. It's about four or five foot across, so you could jump that, even me with my dodgy hips. The path is certainly uh, typical Wilden boggy, um, but certainly not overgrown, I wouldn't have said. I did read it as a threat this path will be closed in March next year for some reason. God knows why, because it's a, a decent little walk. No obvious reason for it to be shut, apart from it being permissive. It'd be a shame to lose this walk, that's for sure. Saxonbury House over there on the right, through the trees, and I think that may be the special needs place. Might have got that confused earlier. But anyway, yeah. Uh, that is what we saw poking through the trees, isn't it? Saxonbury Tower, or Saxonbury Hill Tower. Don't know if the two are associated. And there's the gate mentioned in the text into the park. Wonderful. You're almost uh, walking in a stream on this bit, going downhill. 
definitely uh, a good day for gators. So there's the uh, public entrance through the deer fence into the park. We don't take that. Continue straight ahead here for another 20 meters and do a right at that next finger post. And there's a finger post that takes you through the park. There is uh, information here dated January 18. Um, as I've just left the footpath. But I can't see any mention of the uh, potential closure. Passing uh, an old Nissan hut on Front Village Green. And I wonder if that's the uh, old well up there referred to in the text. Soon find out. Busy road through this village anyway. Nope, that's the cricket pavilion. Nice potential lunchtime stop there. But that might be the well over there. Right, you've got this bench in front of uh, the well in commemoration of the Diamond Jubilee but nothing, um, no little uh, information panel about this being the well so I'll have to take it that it is certainly um, what appears to have been a hole in the ground there and I guess once upon a time in the roof there's some kind of pulley system there anyway church is ahead of us lunch is going to be had over there the recommended lunchtime stop the George Inn as I say mine's right smack next door in the church This is the Church of St Alban and the uh, time is accurate so only about an hour and 15 of daylight left so I need to get my skates on as I said earlier very festive it's going to be a 15 minute whistle stop here Look at that, it's probably ancient this uh, board. The Church of St Alban. Wonderful. That's a rather grand headstone. Or mausoleum, is it? I can't remember what you call these. There is a seat over by the church door, but I'm going to take this one. It's in a more tranquil position. So thank you Mary Cave. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I've overshot by 10 minutes. So it's now 10 past three, running behind schedule. Fingers crossed I get to the edge of Royal Tunbridge Wells before nightfall, which is uh, only an hour hence. Lovely little quiet churchyard this. There was another potential seat there I could have used. Full of robins singing. Not much else, but uh, very pleasant. So isn't that wonderful? High Wild Trail now. One and a half mile to Windmill Farm. So they'd have had a good old uh, trek to come to church. Yeah, the High Wild Landscape Trail which we've done many a time in the past we've still got cows out in the field over there that's unusual and a bit perturbing anyway this is the vista you get at the back of the church wonderful and I presume that's Tunbridge Wells in the far distance
Can't be sure of that, but uh, I'm hoping it is. I'm assuming that's the gap in the hedge referred to in the text, but uh, I can't see any three-way finger post, although there's something suspicious lying on the ground in ahead of us. Yeah, the signage is down, and there's a gap in the hedge. My onward journey straight ahead anyway. But uh, I will report that on Pathwatch. Do like walking at this time of day, towards uh, dusk. Another beauty of the Weald, or the High Weald, is that um, you very rarely hear jet noise here, despite Gatwick not being that far distant. Now entering Chase Wood. So by complete contrast you can see the fire beaters there for a very different type of weather to what we're experiencing today. Crossing over this stream, doing a right here. Very quiet in this wood. The odd buzzard mew, not much else. Now the mists are starting to roll in. Temperature's certainly dropping. Having just crossed the B road, the wicket gate referred to is now on the ground, as you can see. Walking through Neville Golf Course. Clubhouse ahead of me there. As I walk alongside the uh, wall. Got the old Neville Crest there. The old bull. Just approaching the railway bridge. That's a lovely railway line, isn't it? Tree lined. I think the third rail system is far better than what we got with overhead wires. Next to Windmill Farm Cottage, take this path on the left. Sounds like another housing estate's going up on my right, just as I come into uh, Royal Tunbridge Wells residential area now, which is good because I'm losing daylight. Come out of Maryland Road, follow it uphill. Yep, Hawkenberry Farm, another bit of green belt lost. Coming up uh, four o'clock, now following some um, residential alleyways through to the Spread, e Spread Eagle pub, I believe. Well, I didn't see any Spread Eagle pub, but we're now going down Farmcombe Road. Now entering the Grove, and as you can see, it's almost nightfall. So quarter past four, three and a half hours, and about eight mile later, I'm gonna conclude the walk here in the Grove, as opposed to at the station, because uh, the station will be pretty busy. People might get the wrong idea about me filming in the dark, what with various security issues going on at the moment. As you can see from the uh, hot air coming out of my mouth, uh, as is normally the case, <laughs> It's quite chill at the moment. That was an excellent walk though. An excellent short winter walk in one of my favorite areas, the High Weald. Highly recommended. It was, as uh, expected, quite boggy in places, but um, no great shakes if you're prepared for it. So, till the next time. <laughs>